Why does Japan get so many tsunamis? A little more than a decade ago, people living in the Tohoku region of Japan would have been excited about the prospects of finally making it to the weekend after a long week of school and work, ready to enjoy their beautiful rural landscapes where they can embark on worry-free adventures. Well, the tectonic plates underneath the region had different plans for them, as that same day the plates pushed and gnashed underneath one another to unleash what has been recorded as the most powerful earthquake ever recorded in Japan. This earthquake is one of the top five on Earth. Japan, at a magnitude of 9.0. This earthquake, which was also deemed to be the fourth most powerful earthquake recorded since records began in 1900, also triggered powerful tsunamis that rampaged through the island nation, washing away life and property as it triggered the Fukushima nuclear disaster that was so devastating to the people in the area, it's considered to be the fiercest and most severe nuclear accident since the Chernobyl disaster over in Russia. The sight of the waves washing everything away is truly terrifying. While the severity of this incident isn't typical in Japan, the region is known to experience a frequent rate of earthquakes and tsunamis. Why is this so? How is it that Japan has experienced about 1,403 tsunamis till date, more than double any other country has experienced? The truth is that a number of factors come into play in order to make the nation so prone to these waves capable of washing away cities and the lives of many living in them. Japan is classified as what is called an archipelagic country, which means its nation is made up of a number of islands. In fact, the five main islands, named Hokkaido, Honshu, Kyushu, Shikaku and Okinawa, along with the other 6,847 remote islands, make Japan the fourth largest island country in the world. Originally attached to the Eurasian supercontinent, hundreds of millions of years ago, the islands of Japan were formed following the subduction of the Pacific plates underneath the Okutsk plate. Unfortunately, this separation resulted in the formation of these islands in what is known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is a 24,000 mile path that traces its boundaries right along the rim of the Pacific Ocean, in the middle of several tectonic plates gnashing and colliding against one another underneath the aforementioned ocean. The grinding and collision of these tectonic plates, which include the Cocos Plate, the Pacific Plate, Juan de Fuca Plate, Nazca Plate and the Philippine Plate, resulted in the creation of hundreds of volcanoes and stratovolcanoes, some of which consist the makeup of the country of Japan. In fact, the region is known to house 450 volcanoes, which make up about 75% of all volcanoes on Earth, some of which are still active to this day. You could watch them go off all day. So, what do tectonic plates have to do with tsunamis? Well, apart from the abundance of these lava-spewing mountains, the constant gnashing and grinding of these tectonic plates underneath this ring of fire is also responsible for another geographical phenomenon earthquakes. The constant gnashing of the massive tectonic plates has made that region one that is known for its high rate of seismic activities. In fact, it's been revealed that the ring of fire experiences about 90% of all seismic activities on Earth, quite a few of which are experienced in Japan. These seismic activities are constant in Japan's history, as not only did they experience the catastrophic Tohoku earthquake in 2011, it also experienced several others throughout its history. To illustrate, footage shows that just a few years before the 2011 earthquake, Hoshu, the largest island in Japan, experienced 6.6 .6 magnitude tremors when the Chutsu earthquake struck the island. More footage from nine years ago before that shows the great Hanshin earthquake rumbled through the streets of Kobe in 1995 with a magnitude of 6.9, which caused the death of 6,434 people, one of the deadliest earthquakes in Japan in the 20th century. The only natural disaster of such magnitude caused by earthquakes in the 1900s is the Great Kanto earthquake, which rampaged through Hoshu at a magnitude of 7.9 in 1923 and took the lives of more than 160,000 people living in the Kanto region. Despite these devastating events, 
These earthquakes aren't always so violent, and indeed, in some regions of the archipelago nation, footage shows that these tremors have become part of everyday life. The reason these tectonic plates and the ring of fire are so important in this context is that unlike normal waves found in seas or oceans which are caused by winds or tides, tsunamis can be caused by either seismic activities like volcano eruptions or landslides. Most tsunamis, however, are caused by the displacement of a massive body of water, like the amount of water found in the Pacific Ocean due to the violent tremors caused by earthquakes. However, most earthquakes do not cause tsunamis, as you may have noticed. Studies show that the most destructive tsunamis are caused by massive earthquakes, which occur at an epicentre that is close to or on the actual ocean floor. When such an event occurs following a subduction of tectonic plates, the massive earthquake that takes place leads to either a tilt or the displacement of potentially hundreds of kilometres of the ocean's floor. Watch as this causes the displacement of massive bodies of water, which takes out its rage on land with waves that could go as high as a thousand feet. Typically, it takes an earthquake of a certain magnitude to trigger such a volatile reaction, but as we've asserted during this video, earthquakes reaching a magnitude of at least seven aren't too often in the area. Typically, it takes an earthquake of a certain magnitude to trigger such a volatile reaction, but as we've asserted during this video, earthquakes reaching a magnitude of at least seven aren't too often in the area. It's an awesome but terrifying sight as the waves wash through all before them. Considering these factors, it becomes clear that a nation like Japan never really stood a chance in terms of being susceptible to these massive rampaging waves of water. Coupled with the fact that it's literally made up of volcanoes, it's also situated in an area of the world that you could say was designed to host such violent and devastating seismic activities. If the catastrophic earthquakes caused by the subduction of the tectonic plates underneath the Pacific Oceans didn't send these harbour waves to wreak havoc on the Japanese islands, the volcanic eruptions from one of the many volcanoes in the area could also have triggered them. Talk about jumping from the frying pan into an actual ring of fire. That being said, the Japanese have been forced to adapt to such a harrowing situation, especially as the rate of subduction has been measured to occur at a rate of 3.1 to 3.6 inches per year. As mentioned earlier, in some areas of the country, these tremors are part of the daily lives, and as such, the people have devised ways to work around them. Not only are numerous drills carried out to prepare for such events, they even have a well-developed public announcement system that warns them when a seismic event is about to occur. Furthermore, Japan has also sought to battle these powerful waves with their building and infrastructure. With the use of what is known as earthquake engineering, you can see that buildings in Japan are built with shock absorbers, which help the buildings endure the massive waves when they hit them. Furthermore, the construction of physical barriers, like the 51-foot Fudai seawall, to battle the monstrous waves have been known to provide some success against tsunamis. All in all, it's fair to say that Japan has long been well situated to experience these tidal waves. As nature has it, an island nation made up of stratovolcanoes sitting on top of several tectonic plates that constantly grind against one another is bound to experience some sort of seismic activity or the other. Although the citizens of the nation have tried to adapt, there is still no taking away from the fact that such events will always be devastating. The only hope is that the next one isn't as cataclysmic as what the region has been known to experience. The video has come to an end here. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you liked what you saw, what's keeping you from hitting the subscribe button and turning on post notifications? Trust me, you don't want to miss any of our videos. And if you want to check out our previous videos, click right here.